The Hungarian algorithm solves the problem of finding a maximal batching in a weighted graph. It's an algorithm so a computer can implement it faster, cheaper, and more accurately than any human. So learning the algorithm is not important. What's important is learning to create the algorithm. While nobody can teach you how to be creative, you can create strategies to unlock your creativity. And one strategy is to see how others created solutions. So suppose we have an edge-weighted bipartite graph G with partite sets X and Y, where the size of X and Y are equal. We can produce a weighted cover by assigning weights to the vertices so that the weight of any two vertices is at least as great as the edge joining them. The equality graph is the graph whose edge weights are equal to the sum of the weights of the incident vertices. If we can produce a perfect matching, we're done. If not, we can decrease the weights of all vertices in X and increase the weights of the vertices in the neighborhood of X to produce a new equality graph that might include more edges. Now, as long as the neighborhood of X is smaller than X itself, Hall's theorem guarantees no perfect matching is possible. But once the neighborhood of X is the same size as X, then since by assumption the size of X and Y are the same, the neighborhood of X includes all of Y, and decreasing the weights of X by 1 and increasing the weights of Y by 1 won't change the equality graph. So we can heuristically choose some subset where our neighborhood is smaller, we'll produce a new equality graph, and lather rinse, repeat. But how do we choose our subset algorithmically? Now before proceeding, let's address a paradoxical feature. We're trying to find a matching with the greatest possible edge weight, but no matching can exceed the cost of the cover. If we decrease or increase the weights by 1, then we'll reduce the cost by the size of x and increase it by the size of the neighborhood. But as long as the neighborhood is smaller, the cost will decrease. So why would we do that if we're looking for the greatest possible weight? So a bit of intuition might be insightful. That's actually kind of the whole point of intuition. Given a weighted cover, any perfect matching will have weight at most equal to the cost. So we're trying to get as close to the ceiling, the cost, as possible. But the cost of the maximal matching is going to be fixed by the assigned edge weights. So the only way to get close to the ceiling is to lower the ceiling. So let's go back to our problem and suppose our vertex weights are assigned as shown, which will give us the equality graph. And since the neighborhood of ABCD is 1, 2, 3, 4, then decreasing the top vertex weights and increasing the bottom vertex weights will not change the equality graph. But we still can't find a perfect matching. So a useful idea in math and life, try it anyway. So if you do, and you should, A can be assigned task 1, 2, or 3, but B, C, and D must be assigned task 4. And this suggests a useful distinction. Essential employees, like A, who can be reassigned without changing the assignments of others, and essential tasks, like 4, that can be switched from one employee to another. Note that this designation is independent of whether we have a maximum weight matching. And this suggests a natural partition of the employees into two sets. Essential employees like A, who have a choice of assignments, and non-essential employees like B, C, and D, not all of whom are needed. So, we might try to find the essential and non-essential employees in this graph. This is easiest to do if we find a matching. 
we'll use Berger's theorem. First, we'll select edge A1. Now, B1 could be the start of an augmenting path if we switch edge A1 to edge A2. And C1 could be the start of an augmenting path if we switch edges to B2 and A4. However, there's no way we can include D. And so we have our matching. B is essential since they can switch from task 2 to task 3. Now, A is also essential since they can switch to task 2 and B can switch to task 3. Meanwhile, C and D are non-essential. Either can perform task 1. Now, it's important to understand that the distinction between essential and non-essential is whether or not we can switch. And so let's consider another graph. So here, A is essential because we can switch them to task 4. C is not essential because there's no task they can be reassigned to. Now, how about B? While we can be assigned B to task 3, this would leave C without a task. So we can't really do that. And remember, a choice that is no choice is not a choice. So B is not essential. Even though it appears we can reassign B, we can't actually do that without displacing somebody else. This suggests a natural partition of the employee vertices into essential and non-essential. So which one should we work with? A key idea. An algorithm has no freedom of choice. So when creating an algorithm, you should design it to eliminate free choices. So let's consider. Suppose vertex A is essential and has neighbors 1, 2, and 3. If we decrease the weight of A and increase the weight of its neighbors and got a new equality graph, the total weight of A and any neighbor is unchanged, so any edge from A in the original equality graph is in the new equality graph. Moreover, since the weight of A has decreased, we might get additional edges, so A might have even more choices. On the other hand, if we decrease the non-essential vertices and increase their adjacent vertices, the weights of some of A's neighbors would increase, so none of these edges in the original graph would be in the new graph. Moreover, our new equality graph can't have any additional edges from A because the task vertices have increased in weight. And so this gives us the next step in our algorithm. After we've created the equality graph, identify the non-essential employees, decrease the weights of the corresponding vertices by 1, increase the weights of the adjacent vertices by 1, then lather, rinse, repeat. So let's take a look at how that works.